Outrageous Saudi contracts and a major MLS signing realigned the soccer universe this year, but a roster of marquee names, including Ronaldo, Messi, and Neymar, remain on top of the financial table. Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is senior sports money reporter, Justin Birnbaum. Justin, thanks for joining me once again. Thank you for having me, Britt. Forbes just came out with a list of the world's highest soccer players. Before we dive into it, just cut to the chase. Who's number one? So that honor belongs this year to Cristiano Ronaldo, who regains it again after being on top of this list in 2021. We project his earnings for the upcoming season to be a total of 260 million. That's 200 million on the field, thanks to his Saudi Pro League contract, and 60 million off the field in endorsements, marketing, um, all different kinds of endeavors. What's interesting about him is he really kind of kicked off this exodus to Saudi Arabia. Now we see this wave of talent and this wave of spending heading there. And he was really the first top star earlier this year to do that. Um, obviously, you know, he's he's arguably the most famous athlete in the world. He's over 600 million Instagram followers. So the Saudi Pro League knew what they were doing in getting a star like that, even if he is at the tail end of his career. But what's interesting is, you know, when you see outsized wages like that on the field, you know, you, you, you kind of wonder a little bit. And in order to kind of afford him and subsidize his wages, you know, the, the club he's with, Al Nasser, facilitated uh, commercial agreements to help boost his pay. So yeah, he's number one. I wanna get into the trend of players going to the Saudi Pro League, but before we do that, who else from the league made the list? So there were four players playing in the Saudi Pro League that made the list this year. Obviously, we mentioned Ronaldo. Then at number three was Neymar, who jumped over to Al Halal. Uh, at number five is Karim Benzema. And then at number eight is Sadio Mane. Justin, you and I have actually talked about this trend of the Saudis pouring money into live golf. Now we're seeing an uptick of Saudis pouring money into soccer. Can you explain why? Yeah, so it's not necessarily a new development, just kind of bringing it to their domestic league has, has kind of been the turn that we've seen this year because the Saudis do own a Premier League team in Newcastle United. Uh, so what's interesting is you mentioned it. We saw it with Live Golf where they poured in a lot of money to disrupt the golf landscape. And now with soccer, they're trying to build this destination league. They went out and got Ronaldo. Um, obviously, it's 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 really shaken things up the way the soccer world has operated. I mean, the kingdom really has grand sporting ambitions and they're involved in a number of different things. You know, part of that is they want to diversify their economy away from oil. And that's kind of the, the line that they've said over and over again. Others have accused them of sports washing their human rights record. And, you know, what's interesting is that, uh, you know, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman recently did an interview with Fox News and he basically, you know, the interview had asked, you know, what what do you say to people accusing you of sports washing? And he, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, I'll keep sports washing if it raises my GDP. So the Saudis really, really are interested in, you know, investing in the sports world. Uh, in the most recent summer transfer window, they spent over a billion, Saudi clubs, I should say, spent over a billion dollars to acquire 94 players, and that includes these stars. That doesn't include the reported billion dollar packages they, they went after, Neymar, not Neymar, excuse me, Mbappe and Messi with. But yeah, they're not shy about peddling cash and uh, you know they wanna change the way things are done. What I'm hearing from you is billion with a B. Billion dollar deals are huge. How unprecedented is this? Have we ever seen anything like this? I mean, again, you know, we just saw with Live Golf over the last few years, kind of this outpouring of money. You know, you think about like Phil Mickelson got a two hundred million dollar guarantee. Uh, Dustin Johnson got one hundred twenty five million dollar guarantee. They were pouring billions into Live Golf. Um, you know, the the one point one billion they supposedly offered Kylian Mbappe part transfer fee, part a one year salary for him is kind of insane. And also, you know, the one point six reported billion, the reported one point six billion they offered Messi to come play in their league is is another outrageous number. I mean, these are astronomical salaries that we've never seen before. And obviously the reason, you know, Ronaldo's on top of this list and why the list is kind of up so much is because of these outsized Saudi paydays. I want to talk about another comparable storyline, and that's the Chinese Super League. And you're looking at this as a kind of cautionary tale. Can you dive in there? Yeah. So seven-ish years ago, um, the Chinese Super League really started upping its spending on players internationally and bringing in lots of talent. Uh, in 2016-2017, they spent over a billion dollars on transfers. They brought in stars like Oscar, Hulk, Carlos Tevez. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to bring in these stars, raise the profile of the league. Um, you know, the the there's a lot encouraging for, for global investment in soccer all over the place, too. And what ended up happening is it, it just proved not to be a sustainable economic model. I mean, the, the economy faltered, investors and sponsors dried up. 
Um, eventually COVID hit and that really changed everything and, and, and pushed things in the wrong direction. You know, the good comparable thing is, you know, the Saudi spent close to a billion dollars in uh, transfer fees in that last window in that two year period, the Chinese Super League did. But in 2022, the Chinese Super League spent something like just shy of 30 million in transfer fees. So obviously, you know, they've severely walked back spending since then. We've talked about Saudi Arabia's poor human rights record. We talked about them sports washing, especially after Live Golf and PGA Tour struck a deal. So why are players going over there? I mean, you know, it, every player is different. I mean, for one, the, the paydays are outsized. Um, there's minimal taxes. Um, you know, for a lot of players, it's a chance to kind of wind down their careers or compete in lesser competition while staying relevant. I mean, it, it really depends. Karim Benzema is one who, um, you know, he is a practicing Muslim and he expressed like, you know, how exciting this was for him to go play in a, in a Muslim country. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, we kind of got to look at what's happening and we're seeing these reports of these outsized paydays. And I've spoken to a lot of people in the industry and it seems like there's a sense that some of this could be inflated. The Saudis are generally opaque about how they do business and their spending sometimes can not necessarily follow a traditional rhyme or reason, but you know they have the money to spend and they're, they're shaking up the sport. Um, the, the country's sovereign wealth fund, which has 700 billion in assets under management, took over for the teams in the Saudi Pro League earlier this year. So that's all part of this pet plan to kind of build this global soccer power. I do want to take a step back here and talk about the flip side. And there is one player, Lionel Messi, who was offered a massive deal by the Saudis. He ended up turning it down. So first, why did he turn it down? And second, how did he still find himself on this list despite saying no to that massive deal? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I can't speak to Messi's like personal thinking on why he didn't want to take that. Also, you know, obviously the, it was reported figures, so we don't 100% know the accuracy of, of the numbers going out there, but it was reported that he was offered uh, a roughly $1.6 billion deal over three years, which is just an outsized salary. Um, ultimately, you know, we've heard the rumors and the rumblings for a long time that Messi had a desire to come to America and play in Major League Soccer. And that obviously proved true earlier this year when he, he announced he was coming. Uh, MLS has a history of bringing stars over, usually um, in a lot of cases, like when you think about David Beckham or Zlatan Ibrahimovic, it's at the end of their careers where they're winding down. Even at 36, Messi is still at the very top of his game. And, uh, you know, he certainly deserves to be paid that way at this point. Um, you know, we, we project his on-field earnings to be $65 million for the upcoming year. And, you know, that includes the, the reported share of revenue he's going to get from Apple TV and Adidas. Um, you know, those numbers can obviously blow out to a certain degree, too, with um, incentives and performance. But uh, Messi is arguably still the greatest player in the world. He's still fresh off a World Cup win. Um, the Messi circus has been coming around the U.S. I remember a few weeks ago uh, he was sitting out injured when they were playing the Chicago Fire. But even still, 62,000 people poured into uh, Soldier Field to see Inter Miami play. So the effect is real. And off the field, he remains one of the most marketable players. And you actually got the opportunity to see him on the field in person. You got to witness the Messi effect firsthand. But before I let you go, can you lay out the rest, the rest of the list for us? Yeah. So, you know, besides Messi and the Saudi Pro League players, there are a number of other players who qualified for the list. Uh, leading the ones still playing in Europe is Kylian Mbappe at $110 million in total earnings. But also there were three Premier League players who made the list. Erling Holland and Kevin De Bruyne from Manchester City, and also Mohamed Salah from Liverpool. And then rounding it out, Harry Kane, who recently moved from the Premier League to Bayern Munich, and Robert Lewandowski playing over in FC Barcelona. Justin Birnbaum, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Brittany.